my fellow Singaporeans and Jalan Besarians. My party, People's Voice, has said that it is time for real change in Singapore. You are watching this program because you know it is time for change. It is time to put people first. It is time to make Singapore our home again. It is time to regain our dignity, our country, our future. What do we mean when people's voices make Singapore our home again? Many of you, like myself, will remember a time in Singapore when there were many jobs available for willing workers, when our young could graduate with full confidence that there were many opportunities awaiting them, when employees felt secure in their careers and in their industry, when parents felt confident that their children would have a better and not a lesser future than them, and when the young were excited about starting new families, not being burdened with increasing cost of living every day and new taxes being imposed on them. Alas, times have changed. And today, many Singaporeans feel abandoned by this government. They look with sadness at the fact that this government is bestowing generosity and love on foreigners more than their own citizens. And they do not understand why. They do not understand why this government is allowing jobs to be taken, taken away by foreigners at the expense of Singaporeans. I liken that to a bad father, because a bad father will allow an alien child to come into the family and neglect his own children. And they look with sadness at the insane immigration policies that this government has pursued for the last two decades. This government was hurtling towards a 10 million population, although it now denies it. But check the record, my friends. If not for strong voices like People's Voice and another party, the Singapore Democratic Party, do you think that the government and Vivian Balakrishnan would have buckled and made that U-turn yesterday? And that shows you the importance of a strong opposition in Parliament. Without a strong opposition in Parliament, this government will never listen. I founded People's Voice because I wanted to make Singapore our home again. People's Voice is a democratic party with direct democracy at its heart. What do we mean by that? That means more national discussions, more referendums, more blockchain local voting. Many of you will remember the stolen elected presidency we had three years ago. Today, we have a president who was not elected by a single Singaporean voter. That is not the type of democracy that we aspire to. We have great candidates who will make great members of parliament. There are two aspects to being a good member of parliament. The first being the ability to listen and work with the local community. And secondly, to be able to transport the issues and concerns of the constituents into national parliament. But before I introduce members of my team, there is something I must speak about, which has become the greatest crisis in modern times, and that is COVID-19. When COVID-19 burst upon the scene in late January, it was known as the Wuhan virus. There was so much speculation then as to whether it was a naturally occurring virus, whether it was accidentally leaked from a laboratory, whether it was purposely leaked, or whether it was a bioweapon. If it had been a bioweapon, we would have needed to act with speed and decisiveness. 
but our government did not act with speed or decisiveness, despite the fact that they told us they had been prepared for 17 years after SARS. There was a shortage of masks, and worse still, they were telling people to go about life as normal. They allowed Chingay, the air show, mass events to go ahead. When foreign participants had pulled out of the air show in order to protect their employees, this government was not protecting its citizens. On top of that, they were happily going about arranging Madeka generation events when the elderly, the most vulnerable in society, should have been protected. And we watched with horror the photos, the videos which circulated online about these mass events. We spend billions of dollars every year on defense. And whenever someone suggests that the defense budget should be cut, the PAP will pounce on that person and say that he or she is weak on defense. They will not even reconsider the allocation of a certain portion of the defense budget to health care or free schooling. But at the end of the day, it is not the number of F-35s you have. It is, not the, it is not how well equipped your military is. It is not how many sons are serving national service. What is important is how the leaders decide and come to a decision and how they make judgment calls that will protect the lives and safety of the citizens. Today, we have been described as one of the greatest failures as far as COVID-19 is concerned. And Lawrence Wong told Singaporeans they did not have the benefit of hindsight. Great leaders make great decisions and great judgment calls even when they don't have the full facts before them. My friends, I ask you to imagine if COVID-19 had been a bioweapon, Singaporeans would not have stood a chance with this bunch of 4G leaders. They cannot protect us in peacetime, let alone in wartime. And now, they have appointed Josephine Teo to lead their Jalan Besar GRC team. She is singularly responsible for the great explosion of COVID cases in the foreign dormitories, in the foreign workers' dormitories. The first foreign worker got infected in February. She should have known then of the dangers of infection spreading in densely crowded dormitories but she either did not care or she was careless and she allowed the event to happen. Josephine Teo is also the minister who once said that inequality is a sign of the economy's success. There are many cleaners who live in Jalan Besar. They earn on average $1,200 a month. We have a Prime Minister who earns $2.2 million a year. That is about 159 times what a cleaner earns. That is inequality on an obscene scale. Jalan Basarians, I hope your vote, you will use your vote on the 10th of July as a referendum on Josephine Teo's competence and leadership. If you do not think that, her leadership is what you want in Parliament. May I suggest that there is another choice and that you should vote people's voice. I would now like to spend a few minutes introducing the other members of my team. I have Leong Zihian, one of the most foremost human rights campaigner in Singapore. A person with immense qualifications and who has spent the last 15 years providing financial counselling for the many. I have with me also Aslan Sulaiman, one of the most recognised and renowned halal consultants in the world. And finally, I have Dr. Michael Fang, a medically trained doctor who has now turned his skills and attention 
to medical administration. It is a formidable team. It is a team that will be able to take care of the needs of the residents of Jalan Besar and to run the town council properly. We ask for nothing to serve you. We only ask for the chance to serve. And you can be confident that none of us will be holding 69 corporate positions. We will be spending our time on you. Thank you very much.